Using a decimat to help understand decimals. A decimat is a diagram or a visual representation of fractions that will help us to make calculations and represent decimal fractions using it as a guide. So first of all, let's have a look at what a decimat looks like. It is shown on screen. Here we have a diagram of a rectangle and it is cut up into tenths with one tenth cut up into further hundredths and one small hundredth then cut up into smaller thousandths. It's a very confusing diagram at first glance so let's step through it more simply and we'll start off with just one rectangle. This we can call one whole. This is one whole rectangle. It is complete. I have just one and I could refer to it as let's say a page, a piece of paper. I have one whole piece of paper. I can now cut it up into 10 pieces. So here I have not shown the strange looking corner section that's been cut up further. Instead, I have my piece of paper cut up into tenths. So each of these last large rectangles are indeed tenths. And if I count them, I have 10 equal pieces that I've cut the paper up into. Um, so I have one tenth represented by each of those rectangles and I have 10 altogether. So I've got 10 tenths. Then if I was to cut it up further as shown in the corner of the decimat, I now can cut it into pieces of this side called hundredths. There are a hundred of them, if we actually count them closely. Um, yes, they are hand-drawn, so they're a little bit wonky. But you can clearly see that each one of these small rectangles is one hundredth. So any which one that I choose to point at will also be a hundredth. And there are a hundred of them all together. So there are a hundred hundredths shown in this diagram. Or I can then go further to the hundredth that is cut up ten times, which would create thousandths. And this is shown by cutting up the rest of this rectangle into the same types of cuts. And if I actually sat and counted those, there are indeed a thousand there. And each little rectangle is a thousandth. And it doesn't matter which one I point to, each one of them is a thousandth. And there are so many, in thousands of them it of course that I can't actually label them all. So if we take this back to our diagram it makes it much simpler for us to see what it's actually trying to show us. We have 10 tenths shown here on the screen but the corner tenth in the top left has been cut up into 10 further pieces which each of which is one hundredth. And then the corner hundredth has been cut up another 10 time, which each of those is actually a thousandth. So let's try this on by looking at this diagram. Now, suddenly we've got a lot of pink shaded. It might at first seem a little bit confusing, but if we just take a moment to take it in, we just need to go through a simple process of working out what does each shape represent how much do we have of each shape, and how do we record that as a decimal. So what decimal is it? Well, first of all, each of these large pink shapes, uh, not well, they're not shapes, they're actually um, fractions of a shape, is a tenth in size. So I have eight of them. So I've got eight tenths. Each of these particular fraction amounts of my larger rectangle is actually a small hundredth and I have eight of those. So I've got eight hundredths and I'll write that next to my eight tenths. And each of these smaller pieces are indeed thousandths and I've got five of them so they're five thousandths. And I'll write those next to my eight tenths and eight hundredths. Notice that I'm making a point to write them next to each other and in shrinking order because this is how a decimal is written. And then all I need to do is put my decimal point in front of my tenths where it always goes. So I've got 
0.885, but of course I put a zero out the front so that my decimal point doesn't get mistaken as a dot or a smudge, and it's very clear that this is a decimal I'm dealing with. So if we look back at the original decimat diagram, we can see it's a very useful tool because we can actually use it to draw and show any decimal from as small as 0 0.001, which would just be that smallest rectangle represented by the orange that's shaded in, all the way up to colouring in the entire whole. So having 1 or 1.0 or zero, zero, as many decimals as you wanted to show, although you don't need to include those. So to give some extra examples, just to finish up, here we have 0 0.001 coloured in in orange on the screen. However, I could colour in all sorts of variations. So I could colour in three tenths there and two tenths, sorry, two hundredths here and an extra thousandth here and I would then end up with, quite simply, an altered decimal of 0 0.3 tenths, two hundredths, and two thousandths. Or I could keep following this process and colour in a whole bunch more. So let's say I can colour in, so that I've coloured in nine of each shape, leaving just one in the corner here that's uncolored so I put an arrow that one's not colored in there but all the rest are and that would mean that I've got nine tenths nine hundredths and nine thousandths colored in so I'm sure you're getting the idea that any combination of coloring the tenths hundredths and thousandths can give me a range of three digit decimal placings after the decimal point that I can show visually using a decimat. And to show the largest possible number I can represent with the decimat, of course, I can colour in that last little rectangle where the arrow is, and now rub that arrow out because I've coloured it in, and that would give me one hole now coloured in, in orange.